On this episode, I will be showing you how to make a carbon slash carbon Kevlar part using vacuum infusion. This particular part is for a GC Impreza. It's a fuel tank protector. Here you can see we are starting off by making the template to which we will cut out all of the patterns in the Kevlar and carbon Kevlar. I did try and cut the Kevlar with normal Kevlar scissors, but it was a total pain in the ass. I bought these off of Amazon, and as you can see, I was able to cut them in no time. Next was to apply seven layers of mold release wax. I really took my time as I wanted to have this part come out as clean as possible. So maybe went a little overkill on the wax, but in the end it turned out. And the very last step before laying fabric is a PVA mold release. I just used a foam brush to apply a few coats of that. Next, I put down the gum tape that will eventually seal the vacuum bagging to the part itself. So I've got three layers down. The really nice, easy flat surfaces, I'm able to get relatively wrinkle-free, nice <clears throat> in all the indents. Obviously on the corners, I had to cut the seams, um, but tried to get those as nice as possible as well. Tried to keep even the ribs on the inside of the tank struggling a little bit with keeping the flange super nice um, but I figured I may just trim all of that off anyway this side uh, with all of the extra contours got a little wrinkly on the very first layer um, and to be honest that was the first layer of Kevlar or any type of composite I've ever laid so I think it's definitely getting better. There's some spots to work on, but for the very first part, I think it's coming out good. So this is the core material that I'll be using in the higher impact zones. Uh, try and give the front of the tank and the sides of the tank a bit more strength just so the product will last longer. While I have learned this after creating this part, from creating this part, talking to people who have built these in the past, they said to use Soric core material where I use foam core. Um, I guess the Soric lasts longer, it has better impact resistance than the foam core. So here's the foam core. Still left room for where the straps go. You don't want to make that too big so then the straps don't fit. Um, but on all the high wear areas, I'm not. I like to try new angles such as this. I have no videographer skills. I'm literally filming everything on my iPhone. But if you do like this or you have suggestions, please leave a comment and let me know. So here we have the 
final product all laid up. There's still some corners that I need to stick together before I put the peel ply on. But when I went to go open it, I realized that I had ordered a peel ply for like a flat surface. I hopped on Amazon and overnight the correct peel ply. Yeah, so now it's peel ply. Then we'll have the flow media or flow medium layer. Uh, and then I'll set up all of the vacuum infusion transfer tube around the outside. And then I'll have the suction right here. Now we have the peel ply and the flow medium all taped on. And then we've 3D printed these on Friday. And so those tubes are taped on. They're corrugated to allow resin to come out of all the, all the corrugations or the spirals, whatever you want to call it. So here's this side, so I'll have one and two inlets, and then the vacuum will be hooked up to the center one. I took away some of the flow media around this, the exit, uh, just to try and slow down a little bit of the fluid from the flow medium to here, just to give the rest of it a chance to all get to the same point uh, relatively at the same time. Now on to putting the vacuum bag itself on. The most important thing when setting up vacuum infusion is to start in small areas. Obviously listen for the bigger leaks, fix those first. But really just spend time making sure everything is correct. I made sure the hose coming into the pump was all sealed before then piercing for the inlets. Um, once I knew the bag was sealed, I knew that I could move on to the next step. And if there was an issue, I knew where it would be. For the infusion itself, the air I ran into were the hose clamps that I was using were more for an automotive uh, coolant line, not so much vacuum infusion. So it was really hard to vary the flow of the resin, which did leave me with a few spots that were concerning. So it's just about there. Got this last little corner. I think there should be enough resin once that gets going. I'm not sure why it's not slowly moving. And just like that, the part is infused. Full coverage. I think it looks good. Maybe in the morning I can come out here and Pull it apart, pop it out of the mold. While I wasn't able to get the part off of the mold in the morning, I needed more wedges. And unfortunately it was in Time lapse, and I missed the most satisfying suction release sound when the part finally released. And there you have it the part, the mold, still in good shape, a little bit of cleanup. Definitely used a little overkill on the uh, 
adhesive spray to get this first layer to stick. That's why it took so long. Some of the uh, the glue is still on here, so it's still kind of glued in the mold. But uh, yeah, I think it came out really well. Super light. And here we have a rough trimmed, almost finished part. As for the installation of the molds, it sits just on the tank like that. And OEM straps straddle the guard and it should give you an overall finish such as this. Covers all the way to where the body is, all the way up. Still allows There's also the metal heat shield. Obviously gets bolted there, but it all fits within that. 